Mene Mene Teco Perez. Okay, guys, in this video, in the beginning of this video, we want to talk about some concepts, some ideas about end times prophecy, Bible prophecy, the book of Revelation, book of Daniel. In the book of Daniel, we have a famous, famous expression, Mene Mene Teco Perez. And Mene is like a minna, is like a dry measurement. Teco is a shekel. And a shekel is a coin, like this is a replica of a coin. And you would use a the amount of weight that would be in the coin, just like we have currency, to measure something. So on this channel, we have many concepts, okay, that are deep concepts in the scriptures that we can't really directly correspond to in the world today or modern thinking, okay? So we have to kind of go back to the ancients, look at what they're doing, what are they talking about? And we can see that, for example, with Moses, there was a certain amount of shekels that went into the incense. So that was a measurement of the incense, okay? And we have the virgins and they have those that had oil, those that didn't have oil. So what is the oil? The oil is love. So yes, love is measurable, okay? Not only that, we have um, various numbers in the scriptures. We have various types of measurements. Okay, you could see that the, the oil can be a liquid measure. It can be a dry measure. You can have a coin. Okay, but eventually all these things produce numbers. Okay, you can have uh, numbers in your weights. Okay, that's what Danny, Daniel said. Number, number, way divide. Okay. So the way you number something is just a number, okay? But those numbers can correspond to different things. They can correspond to measurements, okay, of a space. So for example, John is told, take a reed like a rod and measure the temple. Okay, so now we had liquid, we had dry measurements done in a scale, Okay, now we have a distance measurement, okay, done with a, a staff, a walking stick, right? Both of those will produce numbers, right? So when they produce those numbers, they may have the same message, okay? So we have different things that are uh, ways of measuring, guys, okay? We have ways of measuring uh, so when we see those scales, we see dry liquid measures, okay? And, and Daniel says this, you are weighed in the scales, weighed in the balances, all right? Many, many tecopezes, no, number, number, weigh, divide. Now, guys, the whole book of Revelation is a temple service. Yes, the whole book of Revelation is a temple service. So let's, let's explain. So uh, throughout the book, you have different things happening in the temple of heaven, okay? This, this, uh, this temple comes into sight. We said, he overcomes, I'll make you a pillar in the temple to the church of Philadelphia, right? Well, once we get to the seals, we see one riding a black horse and in his hand, a pair of scales, a pair of balances, okay? And... Uh, one of the living creatures says to him, and follow, the, follow what's going on. He's, he's measuring the scales, right? He says, um, a measure of wheat. Okay, so um, this is not a measure of wheat. It's not the uh, uh, amount. It's just the principle. Hopefully you understand the principle. But this is actual wheat. So he says, a measure of wheat or a dry measurement, okay, in the scale... And then he says, for a coin, for a penny, the King James says, but it's a denarius, all right? And that denarius would equate to a shekel, okay? So what is he saying? He's saying a measure for a denarius, okay? So one denarius and one side, and he's giving a amount of the measurement, right? Okay, clear enough. 
He says that for the wheat. He says that for the barley. He says that for the, um, the dry measures, okay? So these measures are part of the temple service. Because he says, measure those, but he says, touch not the oil, okay, the olive oil, touch not the wine. Now, in the temple service, you would have all these ingredients. These are all components of the service, of the temple service, okay, and they would uh, be, you know, wheat in bowls, okay, and it's, it's part of the service, part of the proceedings, all right? Now, we saw before how our coin, okay, is a, a measurement, all right? So that coin can do multiple things. So we could see before it, it weighed our, the amount of wheat. We saw before it, may, it weighed the amount of the oil, okay? Uh, liquid dry measures. Now, the other thing is the coin is a, is a weight, so you see our scales there, our big scales, you see those circles up there, those are big weights. So if you had a, a larger you know, portion of, of something, you, you would measure those by weight. Well, the coin does the same thing. So you would take a number of coins, melt it to produce a weight for a larger measure, all right? But when you do that, scripturally, okay, you also produce by melting the coins, a vessel, right? So now it says, okay, when Moses built a tabernacle, there were a, cer a certain number of coins that went into a bowl. Okay, so the size of the bowl, the weight of the bowl was determined by coins. You see that? So the coin measures dry, liquid, and the vessels. Now, in order to have the coins go into the vessels, what do you have to do? You have to melt them. You have to purify them. That's what we showed you in the last video. The angel of the covenant, he purifies. Okay? Now, the other thing about the coin is the coin is also a census of counting people. So, just like you could see, the coin measured the wheat, it measured the oil, it measured the size of the vessel, okay? Well, at the time of Moses, the coin was also a census. So the, um, every man gave Moses a coin. It was called a half shekel. So that coin was taken by Moses, and then the m amount of coins he received determined the number of people. So we counted the people based on the number of coins which he received. The number of coins was melted down to build the tabernacle, okay, to build the menorah, to build the Ark of the Covenant, to build the temple. So, it's the principle that the coin is people. So that when Moses went to build the vessels, went to build the tabernacle, okay, each vessel, each component of it, okay, of the gold that went into everything represented people. So the man gave Moses the coin. Moses took the coin, made the vessel, was in the temple. So that is the principle that we see in the New Testament. We say, you are the temple. Okay, you, now you're the components of the temple. Okay, so that gold of each individual person is melted and goes into the vessels. Okay, so the coin is also... We can see that, okay? So, so then, now when you see the book of Revelation, you see, um, you see the angels, they have bowls, they pour out their bowls, okay? Now, in the bowls could be, you know, it's offerings, it's, it could be wheat, okay? But it's also, when the, when the angel is measuring, okay, it is the temple service. He has a pair of scales in his. But it is also the harvest, okay? So just how you could see the coin went into bowls, went into the vessel, the coin also measures the wheat, it measures the harvest, okay? And so it, uh, the harvest is people. So how that is done by the scales, by the balance. Now, the coin is also authorization, okay? So the, throughout the book of Revelation, there are things that are authorization, okay? In order to do something, okay? When the lamb, it, it, he saw the book, the, he saw the book, and the book, 
No one was worthy to look at the book, look at the scroll. Okay, no one could look at it. All right, never mind, open it. All right, but it was the lamb that was worthy to look at it. Okay, worthy to open the seal, worthy to open the book. Okay, so it, it is the lamb that has this authorization, only the lamb. Okay, but the, the lamb expresses this authorization through keys. Okay, so just like we have authorization for different things, like if you work in a business and you have certain access to certain parts of the, of the facility, let's say it's a large business and you have, you know, executive offices and things like that, you would have a card, right? And that card would open certain doors and it closed certain ones. So based on where you work, Okay, and your authorization, you can open some doors and close others. Well, the Lord Jesus does the same thing, where he says, he has the key of David. Okay, now the key of David is a nail. Okay, so the nail, we know it's a nail because he says he has the key of David. The, the key opens a door, and the door is a house or the temple. Okay, so the key is... The, the angels, the hosts around him, have the code, the, the authorization, have the understanding to open the door, to open the seals, okay? Now, we know this is a nail because it says so in Isaiah twenty two twenty two when it's talking about the nail is the key to the house of David. Uh, he says the, the key to the house of David, it describes it as a nail. So, the nail is our authorization to understand it. So, we must follow the nail, in its use and its examples, okay, for opening the book, for for interpreting, okay, only the lamb is worthy to open the book and to release it. So it's at a particular time that the lamb opens a seal and he opens a book and it's only at that time that we can understand the book. We can understand the scroll. We can understand um, these uh, spiritual principles, okay? So the other thing we have is you can see it has scales. You can see it, it's, it has different measurements. It can measure a space, okay? But the other thing that numbers do is they measure time, okay? So when we have time, now we have you know, the principles of time, principle of something starting, something ending, something beginning and ending through numbers, right? So the other thing with all this is scripturally, the reason I'm describing all these things is you have multiple concepts through numbers. You have people, okay? You have uh, scrolls, you have authorizations, okay? You have numbers of a building, of a, a distance, right? Um, and you have, um, you know, you know, people in vessels, people in, in wheat, people in oil, okay, people in the temple service, okay, and then you have time, okay, so the principle of time also relates to these numbers, okay, so let's just say, for example, I say the number, you know, 70, okay, it's just a number, what does that, what does that mean? Well, scripturally, what, you, what it means is that there are, there are bowls that are 70 shekels. Okay, we know the Lord Jesus, when he had his 12 disciples, he also commissioned 70 disciples. So now you can see a vessel, you can see people, right? And 70 can also be time, okay? Uh, Daniel's 70 weeks, Okay, so you have 70 weeks, now you have time. All oh, it's the number 70. Okay, it's just a number, all right? But you can see that one number can equate to different things. All right, now I'm going through slowly describing all this to you because this is how this whole channel works. Okay, quite often we'll talk about these concepts and we're under the assumption you understand some of these principles that you understand time, you understand that you know, we can take a coin, a coin can measure a bull, it can measure the wheat, okay, it can make, make a dry measure, it can measure the oil. But principally what is happening in the book of Revelation is in fact a temple service, okay? So, uh, we say all that before we get into the meaning of the many, many tecoperas. Now, we get the many, many tecoperas in Daniel chapter 5 
and verse 25. Famous verses, many, many, Teco Perez. Let's look at our notes and let's get into it. Now, as we get in our notes, just before, um, we just want to explain again the different authorizations. Okay, so we saw before that the key of David is a nail. Okay, so it's a key of David. It's a nail. The nail opens the door. The door is a house. It opens up the information. It opens up the interpretation. It opens up the revealing of Jesus Christ. Okay, we could see that through the nail. That is also done by decrees of the king. Now, we've been on a series of the kings of Persia. Okay, Cyrus, Darius, um, Ahasuerus, Artaxerxes. Okay, these are the four kings of Persia. Each of those four kings had a significant decree. Okay, when they issued that decree, that is a um, very important because it shows us the second coming of Christ through uh, different time frames and different information. Now, in this video, we're going to look at the decree of Artaxerxes specifically. So, just as we saw with um, the measure, we're going to see the many, many teko pairs and the scales in the uh, wider of the black horse. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to see that coded in the many, many teko pairs is the decree of Artaxerxes. Many, many teko pairs. So, we come to the famous prophecy. You know the story of when the writing was on the raw and it wrote Mene, Mene, Teco, Perez. Mene, Mene, number, number, Teco is a coin, is a, a shekel, Perez. Okay, so that means number, number, way, divide. Okay, so when we saw our coin, when it says Teco, that's what it means. It's a, it's a shekel coin. Now, we have um, various interpretations of this, but one of them is to actually do what we did. We saw a mene as a dry measure. Okay, so we saw the dry measure of a mene. Okay, and when Daniel is doing this prophecy, he is in Babylon. And so a mene is 50 Babylonian shekels. Okay, so the, a number of coins in the dry measure of a mene is 50, okay? And a coin is one tekel, or one shekel. And Perez means to divide. Now, what's taking place is um, the Most High is going to end the Babylonian Empire and then go into the Persian, the, Med the Medes and the Persians. And it's another way of the Most High saying it is God that is in control of the kingdoms of men. So you can look at history and they say this and that. No, it is God that is in control of the kingdoms of men. And he uses men like Daniel to show when one kingdom ends and one begins. So that's what's taking place. And when that ends, we have Cyrus coming in. Historically, we know this to be fact. And when Cyrus comes in, this begins the Persian. And um, we'll have another video where we talk about Cyrus. But for right now, the handwriting on the wall, many, many tekel pairs. Let's do the interpretation. So now that we know there are two menes, it says mene twice. It says number, number. Now, remember, there's 50 um, shekels, okay? So what that means is we have um, 50 shekels and one mene. So you got 50, one mene, 50, two mene. So that's 100. Perez means to divide. So then what we do is we divide the 50 shekels into 25. So you got 50, 50, 25, and one. Okay. Many, many. Tekel, one is one shekel, one coin. Okay. So if we add those up, it's 126. So we have 126 coins, 126 shekels. Now, there's a, uh, there's a fraction of a coin, a fraction of a shekel. Like if this is, let's say this is, in currency, let's say this is one US dollar, right? That's one dollar. But then let's say there's another coin, which is called a penny, 
a penny is, of course, there's a hundred of those in one dollar, right? So it's a fraction. The penny is the fraction of a dollar. Well, well, there's a fraction called a gira, which is 20 giras in one shekel, okay? So the pennies or the giras, there's 20 of those in one shekel. So now if we take the 126 and we multiply that by 20, we come up with 2,520. Okay, so what's going on here? We had, we had dry measures, okay, we saw dry measures, okay, in a mina or number, right? We had coins, tekel, okay, now what we have is with the pennies, now we have time. 2,520 days is seven years, okay? So clearly what's happening is within this prophecy, many, many tekel pairs, we have dry measures, we have coins, and we come up with time, okay? Now, we want to keep these ideas and these principles as we keep going, because as we said, once we get to Revelation, and the third seal was open, a black horse, and him that sat upon it had a pair of scales, okay? And then what he said, a measure, a measure of wheat for a denarii, a coin, okay? Three measures of barley for a denarius, okay? So, it's this principle of dry measures and coins measuring the offering. What's the offering? The offering is the harvest. Now, keep these in the back of your mind when we talk about the wheat and the barley, okay? Now, now what we're going to do is we're going to uncode this further. So, throughout the prophecy, what happens is Daniel... Uh, begins to actually before we do that let me before we shift to the next part of what I want to present to you I want to reconfirm now when we do these things we always want multiple witnesses so for example in our uh, diagram of the temple when we look at these numbers so remember how before we were explaining that they're just numbers okay well in the temple this is the temple here the length from one end of the holy of holies to the other end, this length here, is 60 cubits. Now, in the sacred cubit, there's 2.1 feet in a cubit, okay? So, 2.1 times 60, you can see here, 60 times 2.1 is 126 feet, okay? So, just like we saw 126 shekels, okay, now the 126 is measuring a distance in feet in the temple. So, again, the distance in the temple, you have the length is 60 cubits. The height is 60 cubits, okay? Well, 126 times 20 is 2,520. That's seven years, okay? So now the dry measure is showing time, okay? And it's showing seven years, Okay, we show you these diagrams all the time. We have seven years and seven years, 14 years, okay? Coded in many, many Teko Paris, coded into the Holy of Holies in the temple. Amazing. All right, now let's get back to where we were in many, many Teko Paris and to confirm the interpretation of it as it relates to Artaxerxes decree okay so i hope you're following along if you if you get lost in any of these concepts or anything just go back rewind it go back to where you were and it'll make sense so now we're going to see through a process of the strongest concordance when we look up the strongest concordance we look up the words we look up these words and we find them in context in the Bible. If we can find them in the Bible, we can find it interpretation. So now this is the work of a scribe by taking what we see and see if there is a it relates to something that can give us more information. So for example, each one of these words correlates to a number in the Strong's Concordance. Now, the book of Daniel and a couple other books in the Bible like the book of Ezra are written in Aramaic. So it's not written in, all, not all of it is, is Hebrew words. There are other words in the Strong's Concordance called Aramaic. So uh, it's very unusual to find words 
that relate to both um, two places in Daniel and in this case, Ezra. But what this does, it gives us the interpretation by something called Artaxerxes' decree. So we showed you before how the decree of the king, okay, allows the authorization, allows the understanding. Okay, now we're going to move through this quickly, okay, so that um, it's a simple principle, but basically what we do is we can see the word mene in Daniel 5 verse 26. Okay, this is a mem, noon, aleph, uh, mene. Okay, pronounced this way. Here's our strongest concordance number. Now, what will happen is sometimes it will correspond to a Hebrew word. Okay. Uh, so, I think I'll have to double check this, guys, on the numbers. I think this is actually 4482. And, and it comes from 4483 or 4484. This should be a 4. And what, and what it says in English when we read in King James, God has numbered... Or set the kingdom and finished it. So what he's saying is God determined the kingdom of Babylon and it's over. Now it's going to the Medes and Persians. Okay, that's what this prophecy is saying. But we have this coded word mene. All right. And what we want to do is we search this word in the scriptures. We find it with Ezra in Ezra chapter 7 and Ezra chapter 8. You'll see consistently all these words. And it says Ezra set magistrates and judges okay so here we saw the numbering all right related to uh the time of the kingdom okay numbered the kingdom set the kingdom in place and he's finished it now he's setting with the same word to number mena people okay you see that okay so he set the kingdom and finished it now the word kingdom all right is malku Strongest Chords 4437, and we find that in Ezra chapter 7, verse 11. Artaxerxes' decree of all the people of Israel in his realm. Strongest 4437, the same word, Malku, as kingdom. Same exact word. So we can begin to see is that the same words in Daniel chapter 5, in these few verses, Daniel 5, 26, 27, 28, are all in Ezra chapter 7 and chapter 8, okay? So we set, numbered the kingdom, okay, and finished it. Finished it is Selem, Strong's 8,000, and we see that word. It means to complete, is delivered, and with the vessels, Ezra 7, 19, the vessels were delivered to God. Same word. Then we get to Tekel, okay? Once we get to Tekel, we can see Tekel, uh, corresponds, so this is Aramaic, corresponds to the Hebrew 8254, it means to weigh, to balance. Okay, so 8254 we see in Ezra chapter 8, verse 25, he weighed, okay, 8254, the silver, the gold, the vessels, unto 650 talents. Okay, so once you melt the gold and it goes into enough, it goes into like bullion or blocks. Okay, and then he says, you are weighed, okay, in the scales and found wanting, okay? So again, this same word, you are weighed, is the same word, 82, uh, 80, uh, 86, 25, okay, in the scales, okay? So this is what happened is they were weighing all the gold, the silver, and vessels that went into Babylon, and remember, they drank out of the vessels, and that's when God said, okay, your kingdom is up. It's going to the Medes and Persians. That's what's happening in Daniel. So they're weighed in the scales. So that's what we're saying, is that Dan Daniel, in the many, many Tekel Paris, is the weighing of the scales, okay? So what's happening there is it's the weighing of kingdoms, okay? It's the weighing of people, like he said, the magistrates, and the weighing of vessels, okay? And then we have Perez, Okay, and Perez is to divide. You know, you can divide a mina, okay, or a shekel. And so each man gave a half a shekel. So that's dividing a tekel. So that's the census, counting of the people. Okay, so this word Perez is Strong's H 6537 in the kingdom of uh, Artaxerxes, the king of Persia. Now, the word Persia is actually very similar to Perez. You see uh, a pay, uh, a resh, in uh, Sade, okay? So it's Paris, but it sounds very similar to Paris, 
in terms of Persians, okay? And your kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persian, Paris, okay? And then you see the, in the kingdom of Artaxerxes, the king of Persia, okay? So what's happening is the, the same words, again, in Daniel are found in Ezra, giving us this Artaxerxes decree uh, for the end times, okay? Now, the other thing you can see here is we've been teaching this a long time, guys. I know a lot of you don't uh, go back and look at the old videos. Now, I know some of you have been watching this channel for years, yet I teach this stuff and it's like you heard it for the first time. But I really encourage you to go back to this Great Army Census video. You can see we had the same thing in our notes where we told you about the many, many Tycho Perez and the counting of the people in the Great Army. Okay. And we showed you the precise numbering and orders of that. So if you're part of the Great Army, it would really make sense for you to learn, you know, the things that we're sharing with you here. But back to uh, the prophecy. So we could see the many, many Tycho Perez. We could see it's numbering the kingdom, and it's also numbering the people, okay? So just like we saw that the angel, he had the, um, the scales in his hand, Okay, and he had the, the scales in his hand. What did he measure? He measured the wheat and the barley. Well, the same thing happens in Artaxerxes' decree, which we see in Ezra. So these are Ezra just chapter 7 and 8. We see the same thing. He measured a hundred measures of wheat and it and a hundred baths of wine and a hundred baths of oil. Okay, so this is what it says in Revelation 6, um, chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. It says, touch not the oil or the wine. So we have the wheat, the wine, and the oil. The same thing that the angels are measuring in Revelation chapter 6. Okay, so yes, that can mean, um, it can mean other things. It can mean famine, yes, but what it's doing is it's measuring the harvest. It's measuring the people. So now, we can see the mystery of coded when once we have the key, we have the key of David. Now let's show you where the key of David is in Ezra. So the nail we see in Ezra chapter 9 and verse 8. For now a little season has been showed, uh, great, some, a space of grace has been showed to our Lord God to leave us a remnant to escape. So the remnant, okay, to escape, to leave us a nail in his holy place, okay? So the nail is our key, is our authorization. There you can see it. So we're right there in Ezra chapter 9, okay? And then Ezra chapter 8 has the number of the people, okay? So what happens here is, you can see Ezra 8. Now these are the chief of the fathers that in their genealogy went with me up from Babylon in the reign of Artaxerxes. So Artaxerxes' reign says for the people to go back. Of the sons of Phineas, Gershon, the sons of Ithamar, Daniel. So now, this is, um, we don't know if this is the actual Daniel of the book of Daniel, but a person by the name of Daniel appears only one other place in the whole scriptures other than the book of Daniel. And that's right here, Ezra chapter 8, verse 2. So what this means is this is Daniel's timeline. Okay? Now Daniel's timeline is coded here in Ezra chapter 8 by the counting of the people. So the counting of the people, you would have the chief uh, men, like the chief of the tribes, and then you have the number of people, okay? Now there's, you can see a precise and perfect order here of 14. So you have 14 chief, okay, giving us the number 14, and then we have the people. That number of people is 1,496 plus 14. If we add those up, you can see it's 1,510. Now, what we have is people now are days. Okay, just how we show you before, the numbers are multifaceted. So the 14 liters plus 1,496, it was 1,510. In Daniel's timeline, what this is, is from the start of the tribulation to the abomination that makes desolate is 1,510 days. Okay, that's proof number one. Then, um, we have another group of people called the Nethanims, and the number of those people is two thousand uh, two hundred and twenty. So, from the tribulation, start of the tribulation to the daily sacrifice, it's two hundred and twenty days. That's proof number two. 
Now, proof number three is a second numbering of the people. You can see the verses here, guys. I'm, I'm not going to make this a long video and go a lot of time into this, but you can see the same 14, number, 14, chief, okay? You can see them there. Total of 14 of them, okay? And then what you can see is a couple other groups, okay? You have 18 here and 20 here, giving us 38. Then it says there were 12 chief of the priests and also... Shirabah and Hashabiah. Okay, so you got the chief here, and you got um, another number here. So you got 12 plus 2, these two guys, and then there's 10. So 12 plus 2 plus 10 equals 24. Now, if we add up the 14 here, 14 plus the 38 here, plus the 24, 14, 38, 24 gives us a total of 76. Now, what this is, is this is 1,260 days minus 1,335 days. And you can see that's 75. And you say, well, you know, that's 76. Why is that 75? Well, in the Enoch calendar, there's an extra day in there. Okay, it's one of the solar days. So once that's added to the 75, it's 76. Our third proof is that coded into the people, guys, if you don't understand anything I'm saying, understand this. Coded in the people are days. Daniel's timeline, 1,510 days, 220 days, 76 days, okay? The 76 relates to the 1,260 days minus, or 1,335 days minus 1,260 is the days, okay, to blessed is he who waits the 1,335 days. Now, let's look at everything we learn as it relates to Daniel's timeline and how this contributes to the time. Okay, so first we saw the many, many Tycho Paras produced 2,520 giras from the 126 shekels. Okay, so that is seven years. Okay, so when we do Daniel's timeline, we start with this number 2,520. Okay, and we start with that timeline. Okay, so that's a seven year period. Okay. Now, we can prove that that seven-year period of the Great Tribulation starts September 22nd, 2017 by, once that happens, okay, the space here, okay, between that start of the Tribulation and the daily sacrifice taken away is 220 days, okay? We saw that in Ezra, and we see that here on the timeline. Now, also, from this time period here of the start of the Tribulation to the abomination that makes desolate is from that uh, distance here to here is 1,510 days, okay? So that's the 220 plus the 1,290 days, okay? So there's the five, um, 1,510 days we saw, right? But it also said 76. So from the same time frame, we also count 1,335 days, okay? And that minus 1,260 is our 75. So what we saw in Ezra is we saw the 220, we saw the 1,510, and the 75, proving our timeline is right. Okay, now I know this is a lot of information, so let's also just take a step back and look at this in this view. Okay, so we could see that the, um, the temple was 60 cubits. 60 cubits relates to seven years. Okay, so it's 60 cubits in length and it's 60 cubits in height. So that's seven years and seven years, okay? Each of which is prophetically 2,510 days. All right. Now, what we saw is when the tribulation started, it was a precise date, Revelation 12, okay? September 22nd, 2017. All right, so then we had the days up until the daily sacrifice, all right? Then we have the days going to the um, abomination of desolation, which you can see here. And then we have the 1,335 days here, okay? So we've put those all on this. Now we're gonna have, um, you know, additional teachings of this, but what, what this means is that we're in the, uh, this timeline of the seventh trumpet. Okay, so we're in this timeline of the seventh trumpet. Okay, right here is a, the solar eclipse, December 14th. Okay, that was the mark of the beast. You can see right here, the mark of the beast was instituted. 
there, okay? And we're coming to the 1,335 days. Amazing. So, guys, uh, thanks for watching. I know this is a lot of information, but if you follow along, you'll see I'm saying the same thing, repeating it over and over in all these videos in hopes that it will make sense. So, we will have uh, the notes here that we've uh, discussed in this video available. Okay, we'll have these notes available. Uh, definitely get these. It The video uh, really helps in this one, guys, because um, if you just look at this, it's a, little, it's a little hard to grasp. I understand. That's why I have to do a video with this one. Um, I'm going to go into another one. We're going to go step by step into more of these 75 days, 76 days that we're looking at here of the 1,335 days, okay? So guys, fear God, give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him that made the heavens, the earth, the seas, and the fountains of waters. 